Welcome to the Heal Your Hunger Show, where we get to the heart of why you overeat and how to stop. If you struggle with food and weight like I did, welcome home. Welcome everybody to the Heal Your Hunger Show. So happy to have you here. It is a great day to be alive and I have a very short and sweet message for you uh, at holiday time to just get along a little bit better with uh, family and maybe friends, okay? Wouldn't that be nice? And so, yeah, we wanna, we wanna uh, really make sure that we don't step into any relationship doo-doo. <laughs> so I'm gonna just share this quick message with you. Um, I am recording this live in the Secret Sauce group. If you're not there, you gotta be there. Go over to Facebook, type in the Secret Sauce to End Emotional Eating Now. That's where I record most of my podcasts because uh, you get to hear it right hot off the press, actually as, as it's happening, uh, but also comment, uh, get connected with other people who are wanting to overcome emotional eating. It's just a nice place to be and to be among those who really want to up-level their relationship with food. So join us there. Um, and also just, you know, if you haven't been here before the, at the uh, Heal Your Hunger show, welcome and just know this is where we talk about the real stuff relationship stuff how to get along better with relatives um how to be self-caring during the holidays all these things that we need to be reminded of okay the things i tell you you probably heard before but i'm just gonna remind you i'm gonna whisper in your ear and say remember you need to take care of yourself remember you know boundaries remember to feed yourself yes these are important reminders so anyway on with the show. So um, this topic of holding your tongue is important and it may seem kind of strange because I'm always talking about speaking up for yourself. <laughs> like if you wanna stop emotionally eating, you gotta find your tongue and you have to use it and share what's on your mind. Uh, speak up for yourself, stand for yourself. These are important things. However, at times as emotional eaters, we can be a bit of a busy body, right? We can kind of be a busy body. We can get up into other people's stuff. We can think we know better and tell them how they should do things. We can be a bit controlling and again, put it in the chat. If you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> okay, this is a safe space. You can admit to it here. Yeah, we can be control freaks and we can kind of, um, you know, not shut our mouth at times when it's important to shut our mouth. So I want to share about this because it can really be annoying. And, um, and in fact, I think I had a, uh, I know I had a situation today where I didn't hold my tongue and I did kind of cause a little problem. So um, it, this is important. And it was my little control freak that was coming alive in me. Something wasn't going as I thought it should. I got afraid. And then I blurted something out that um, caused a little bit of hurt feelings. So I had to clean up some messes. And I think that scenario is actually very accurate as to what happens when we do find our, our little inner control freak taking over. <laughs> so trust me, I'm, I'm, I've, I've got a little control freak in me. Generally, she's tamed, she's quiet, she's She's minding our P's and Q's, but at times, not so much. <laughs> and so I wanna talk about what happens and I, I, you might've missed it. So I'm gonna say it again. Something doesn't go my way or something is happening that makes me feel afraid. So fear is always involved here. You know, when something's not going how we think it should go and we, get a, we, we start to get afraid, that's when we start to, act in ways that we wish we hadn't. The fear is there. And I think this is really important to identify because this is how things go awry. Uh, when we get afraid and we feel the need to control, if we're not afraid or we have faith that God's in charge and we don't need to control, then things like we can keep our mouth shut. <laughs> so I'm talking about situations where you might try to control a situation and other people might not, not take too kindly to that. I'm talking about speaking, you know, out of turn, maybe interrupting somebody. I'm talking about kind of giving people direction that they don't want, or they, it was unsolicited <laughs> advice, perhaps giving people advice. 
um, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Times when you say things you wish you hadn't. Times when you say things and other people are like, you know, ouch or WTF or, you know, like what, like, why'd you say that? Or that, you know, that wasn't very nice. And, um, or even worse, they don't say anything, but they feel resentful inside. And we know about that, don't we? Because oftentimes we don't say things and we feel resentful and then we build up this wall with other people. So we don't want to create that reaction in other people either, right? We don't want to do that. We don't want them to do that with us when we get controlling. So there's three things I want to share with you. You might have heard this before. It's so helpful, okay? And, and what, what it is, it's a, there are three questions you can ask yourself. When you have that impulse, when you get afraid and you feel impulsive, because that fear causes impulsiveness. When we get a, I, I did it this morning. I got afraid of something not going the way I think it should. So I blurted something out, trying to control a situation. And other people are like, geez, like that's a little controlling. <laughs> and it was, but the fear came first. Like, I'm like, oh, it's not like I'm uncomfortable because it's not going the way I think it should. I'm afraid it's going to go bad. And so I'm going to fix it. And so often that's what happens when we're impulsively saying something that's controlling or getting up into somebody's business. Are you, are you tracking with me here? <laughs> Please put a yes in the comments if you're tracking with me. Um, I can't be the only one who does this. So anyway, and again, I'm so much better than I used to be, but I slip up, So which I did today. So, so the three things I want you to consider and ask yourself when you're on the precipice of blurting something out or taking control or stepping over a boundary. The questions are, does it need to be said? Does it need to be said right now? And does it need to be said by me? Does it need to be said? Does it need to be said right now? And does it need to be said by me? These are great questions to ask yourself. Okay, because they can literally if you were to at, answer them, like if I thought of that, sometimes you don't have time, right? Sometimes you don't have time. This is why I pray every day. <laughs> you know, I pray for God to direct, you know, my thoughts and my words and my actions. And I pray because that impulse sometimes is uncontrollable. So I need God's help to, you know, again, mind my P's and Q's. I need grace, you guys. I need grace in order to do the right thing, say the right thing, or not say something. I need grace to hold my tongue. And I really, that's why it's one of the many reasons why I pray is because I can get into a whole lot of trouble really fast on my own. <laughs> so, so I need grace, God's loving grace to hold my tongue, you know, be wise, be kind and not be controlling. But it doesn't always work out if I, you know, act on impulse. But if I have a moment and, and, and it have the ability to pause, pausing is important, that beautiful pause, and ask myself this question, does it need to be said at all? You know, and does it need to be said right now? Because oftentimes it's no, let's hold, let's, let's hold our tongue. Let's kind of just, let's play it out. Let's see what happens. At some point, we might be able to speak up about something, but let's see what happens when we have the impulse. Doesn't need to be said, doesn't need to be said right now, okay? And doesn't need to be said by me. Perhaps somebody's better qualified to comment or say something than me. You know, maybe it's not my business at all, in which case somebody else might pick up the slack and take care of it. And I don't have to, you know, think or imagine that it's my business or get involved. So every situation is different. There's no pat answer or right or wrong. It's just that I know, you know, when I'm, when, I, I, honestly, I'm, you know, I, <laughs> there's certain times, of the, there's one time of the month that I'm a little impulsive more than other times. That's when I'm PMS. This is one of those days, but I'm not blaming it on that because bottom line is I did it and I'm responsible for it. 
But beyond that, I just want to say that asking these questions when I can and when I can hold my tongue is going to be so much better for me and everybody around me. I won't be creating resentment in other people because as emotional eaters and people pleasers, we don't want people being resentful of us, right? It feels bad and we want everybody to like us. So I don't want to create resentment in other people by blurting things out and trying to be controlling. Um, that's not so good. <laughs> so anyway, life is not easy. Relationships aren't easy. Managing our emotions isn't easy. These are just some tips that I have for you that I hope are helpful. It's just a very quick message, especially for the holidays. Uh, just think before you talk, if you can pray the first thing in the morning, you know, in the first, thir first thing in the morning, ask God to direct your words and your actions and your thoughts. Um, hope for the best, <laughs> but when you can consider, does it need to be said? Does it need to be said right now? And does it need to be said by me? And I think you will fare much better. And I'm going to take my own advice and take this with me as I go see my family uh, for the holidays. And I hope you take it with you wherever you're going and wishing you all the very best and happiest of holidays. Sending you so much love. Mwah. Thanks so much. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to get free support, insider health info, exclusive invites to events, and more, visit HealYourHunger.com.